What's up everybody, JJ here, and you may have updated your Clipper today to the same errors that I got. That's right, the newest version of Clipper has finally removed some deprecated features. These are features that we knew were gonna be phased out, but now finally they have discontinued support for. So I'm gonna go through, step you through all of the changes you need to make to make your printer work again. It's really not that bad once you know what you need to do and I'm gonna help you along. So there's three big ones we're gonna go through. Step distance is now removed and it's now rotation distance. The pin map option on your MCU is no longer an option. And also in your custom macros, the default parameter underscore and then whatever your parameter was is no longer an option. So the first big one, step distance is now rotation distance. And you do need some equations to get this one to work out, but it's pretty simple once you understand what you need. Here's my config that I'm working on right now. So now instead of this single line that says step distance, you need these three lines. Rotation distance, full steps per rotation, micro steps, and then you might need a gear ratio if there's a gearing between your stepper motor and the belt or screw that it's driving. Most basic 3D printers don't have that, but if you did, you can put that in here. So two of these are really easy. Full steps per rotation, that is a physical setting of your hardware. It's basically, if you're using 1.8 degree stepper motors, which most of you are, then use 200 here. If you're using 0.9 stepper motor drivers, then use 400 here. That's basically 360, which is full rotation, divided by that 1.8 gives you 200. And then for micro steps, use 16, unless you're using a UART to configure your micro steps, or if you've changed it, but for most people, 16 is the most common. The last setting, rotation distance, there's several different ways to calculate this one, and their website has a bunch of different equations. I'm gonna go through the easiest ways. The first one is rotation distance equals full steps per rotation times micro steps times your step distance. So multiply your previous step distance Time the, times these two new variables and put that in as your rotation distance. That one's using a sort of a derived equation. Another way is with hardware again, you're looking at your belt and pulley teeth. For most 3D printers, you're using a two millimeter pitch belt and there's 20 teeth on the gear driving it. So that two millimeters times 20 equals your 40 that I'm using right here. This is an Anycubic Mega S. Most other i3 style printers will be using these same exact values. So that's for the X and Y. Z value, again, you can use that equation or you can look at the lead screw you're using. If it's a T8 lead screw, which is again the most common, has a pitch of two millimeters and four separate threads going through there. So that two times four gives you this eight. And on this printer, there's two Z stepper motors. So make sure you put them in both Z and here is Z1 down here. And then you're gonna need them for your extruder value. Again, it'll be the same full steps per rotation and micro steps are the same because on the Anycubic Mega S, at least with the default extruder, there's no gear ratios there. And it's the same stepper motors that are on the X, Y, and Z axes. The rotation distance, if you haven't calibrated your extruder steps, then this is a great time to do it. To get a starting point, I did use that equation to get this value. That's from my previous step distance. And then since this is a Bowden setup, disconnect your Bowden tube, measure out 110 millimeters, that's what I always use, then tell it to extrude 100 millimeters, then make sure you still have 10 millimeters left. If it's a different value, here's a whole page of the equations of how you do that. This is pretty standard for most 3D printers. If you're running Clipper, hopefully you've done this before. So that pretty much covers rotation distance and these new variables you need. The changes were to be more verbose in your variables where before the step distance variable was you do the calculations and then tell it to your printer. Now you're giving these parameters and it's doing that calculation for you. I know it may be annoying that your printer didn't work this morning, but once you've had it switched over, it's pretty easy either way. Now on to the second issue. Under your MCU, pin map is no longer an available variable. So this one used to be pin map equals Arduino. That doesn't work anymore. You need to basically remap all the pinning. So this section here, I copied over. I copied it over from this sample aliases.config file from the Clipper GitHub. And it has all different types of controller pinouts. This one is an atmega2560. So I just copied that part and pasted it into my config file. I know this isn't the most ideal and they do recommend going through and using the correct pinouts instead of using this mapping. And in the future, I'll probably come back and really put the correct variable names where they should be. But for now, if you're looking for a quick solution to get your printer up and running, just copy this section in or whatever the correct section for you is into your config file. You could also 
copy this whole sample aliases.config file onto your printer and then reference it. But I just copied one section since I'm only using an Atmega 2560. And the last big change that's affected me is the G-code macro default parameter underscore and then you put your variable. That is no longer available. So a lot of your macros might not be working this morning. I found this solution around it. It's just kind of defining the variable in a different way. I did find this off of users on the Clipper GitHub user Pantel helped out. I'm not the best Python programmer, but it does work and my macros are working correctly now. So you just need to copy it in. Here's an example of M30, which is a beep at the end of your print. And so instead of this is the previous way of doing it, this is my new call and the G-code is working. And that about covers the changes in this newest update. Hopefully that gets your printer up and running. If anyone is using my printer config file, I should get this one uploaded to my GitHub soon, depending on how long it takes to get this video out. But I wanted to get this video out because it is more generic. will help anyone out who's using Clipper and having issues after the newest update. Anyone who is using the Anycubic Mega S and wants to use my config file, I'll have my GitHub linked in the description down below. If this video did help you out, it would help me out a lot if you just hit that like button down below. That lets other people know that this video is worth clicking on and it helps me so much with the whole YouTube algorithm. But anyway, I hope you guys have an amazing day out there. Go out and print something amazing and I'll see you in the next one.